Well, let's continue to compare Z-plane and S-plane. And in particular, I, I want to focus in on the frequency axes. Remember, in S-plane, it's the J omega axis. We evaluate H of S along the J omega axis. And in the Z-plane, uh, we evaluate H of Z around the unit circle. So the basic relationships that we've had um, since the first uh, couple weeks of class, I'll put in a recall, because you should all sort of remember this. Mega is always equal to 2 pi F right those are normalized frequencies radians per sample and cycles per sample um, remember the little f is normalized by taking the analog frequency and dividing it by the sample rate and you should also remember that 2 times pi times big F is equal to omega big omega so there's some relationships and finally, I can multiply, I can relate little omega and big omega by, by fs. We can say uh, um, that big omega is equal to little omega times fs. That's just this thing and that thing. So there's some useful sort of relationships. Put a little semicolon there to separate those. Let's, uh, let's look at some sp specific cases. Um, for example, um, if f is equal to half the sample rate, then omega is equal to pi. I'm just plugging f is equal to fs over 2. I'm plugging it in there, and you see that omega is equal to pi. So that relates the analog frequency of half the, th half the sample rate is equal to pi radians in the, f in the discrete time frequency axis. And omega is equal to pi fs just plugging omega equals pi into there okay that's one that's one particular case now do another one suppose we actual actually have a frequency that's equal to the sample rate um, omega is 2 pi and big omega is 2 pi fs you'll see the relationship they they're really simple when f is equal to 3 f s over 2 omega is equal to 3 pi big omega is equal to 3 pi fs and dot 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 this goes on and on let me draw on the left side the unit circle keeping in mind that right here on the unit circle corresponds to 0 remember that the angle omega is the angle off of the real axis so that zero it's also 2 pi and it's 4 pi and etc so that's that's what happens right there on the unit circle um, what else over here is pi and if we were to if we were to go around another swing of the circle this would also be equal to 3 pi 5 pi etc so all that happens right there as well as minus pi, minus three pi. So there's the unit circle. And this is so this is the z plane. Okay, um, let's see. How about the s plane? Well, its frequency axis is just the j omega axis here. I'm just gonna draw the positive frequencies here. So there's j omega going there. And this, of course, is the real axis, which is sigma. So that's the S-plane. Um, let's see. We talked about... Um, so we talked about three different cases here. Omega is pi fs. Let's just mark these off. Um, pi, 2 pi, and 3 pi fs. Um, and I'm going to put them right here. So there's pi fs on the j omega axis so i guess you could say there's a j sometimes we can write a j but we don't have to it's kind of understood let's write 2 pi fs here again put a j if you feel like it um, 3 pi fs so 3 pi fs means we're 3 pi fs along the j omega axis so this value here is equal to j 3 pi fs um, Let's see, and this, of course, is zero. 
All right, so we sort of marked off marked off some territory here. Um, let's let's see if we can relate a couple of examples. Let's suppose that the sample rate is a thousand samples per second. Thousand samples per second. Please mark. In fact, I gave you a little homework assignment like this. Mark the following frequencies. Give you a homework problem really similar to this. Um, on the graph. Okay, got it. Ran, I almost ran out of room there. Um, A. So mark F is equal to 250 hertz. Okay, here's how we would do it. Well, um, we note that F is equal to 0.25 FS. So the normalized frequency is 0.25 is another way of saying that. Omega is equal to 2 pi times big F, which is um, 0.5 pi FS. Okay, and also looking at little omega, little omega is equal to 2 pi times little f, 2, which is equal to 2 pi um, f over fs, which is equal to pi over 2, which of course is 0.5 pi. So case A, if we look up at pi over 2, omega is pi over 2, let me mark that here. That's up here. That's case A, right? That's an angle of pi by 2. All right, what about over on this axis in the j omega um, versus sigma in the s plane? Um, we have to find 0 .5, 0 0.5 times pi times fs. Well, there's pi times fs. So we're looking at a place that's right there. So that's where that's where A goes. Okay? A is 0.5 pi fs. So if I have an analog frequency that shows up here on the J big omega axis, it's going to show up here on the on the circle on the unit circle. All right, let's do another one. F is equal to 1250 hertz. So that means that omega, big omega, is equal to 1.25 times 2 pi fs. And I say that because I just I, I can compare the frequency with fs, and it's obviously a difference of 1.25. And then I'm just plugging it into 2 times pi times big F, which is 1.25 times fs. Right, and then multiplying that out, of course, 1.25 times 2 is um, 2.5 pi fs. Right, and also omega is equal to 2.5 pi. Remember that um, well, little omega and big omega are are related by by uh, fs like that okay so where are these guys 2.5 pi fs is um way up here there's 2.5 pi fs so that's that's case b all right and f for little omega on the unit circle 2.5 pi is well we go around the entire circle gets us 2 pi and 0.5 pi pi over 2 gets us back up to here so this point here is both a and b you see this whole frequency axis is infinitely long but it has to wrap around a circle so this keeps wrapping around you can think of like this is a big piece of big long roll of tape and you just keep wrapping it around um, the unit circle. 
So it just shows the ambiguity that occurs when we sample some signal. Um, two completely different frequencies wind up in analog frequency, wind up at the same frequency in uh, discrete time system.